Russian politics is Russian roulette. Are you prepared to take risk or not? And I enjoy this life. Boris Beresovsky made his billion-dollar fortune in the chaos of Yeltsin's Russia. He became one of the richest men in the world as Russia shook off the shackles of communism. And the state sold off core industries at knockdown prices to a favored few. Aluminium in the Urals, oil in Siberia, steel in the steppes. They all fell into his hands. Crime flourished. Nobody was safe. Berezovsky survived a car bomb, his driver decapitated in front of him. Money first, power next. In 1996, he cemented his rise with a cabinet post under long-term ally, President Yeltsin. Rumors ran that it was Berezovsky that was actually running the country. The silent power, the gray cardinal, the kingmaker. But in 1999, it all went wrong. He had to find a replacement for the sick president. And he backed the wrong horse. Vladimir Putin was Berezovsky's hand-picked choice as Yeltsin's successor. Hoisted on the Russian people without even an election. But then, the puppet turned on the puppet master. The ex-KGB man took on Berezovsky and his fellow oligarchs. Their money was no match for his popular support. He denounced Berezovsky. Charges of fraud and deception were brought against the Grey Cardinal. Other oligarchs were jailed or forced into exile. The most powerful man in Russia was now the president. 2000. Berezovsky had gone from being the kingmaker to public enemy number one. Question, what to do? The only answer, escape and exile. Now on the run, Berezovsky's only consolation is the dream of revenge. Putin will not be removed by constitutional way. I told all of oligarchs we should take political responsibility for the country. Boris Berezovsky now lives in Britain. Houses for him and his family dotted around the home counties. Two years ago, he won political asylum here, claiming his life was in constant danger from Russian secret agents. He employs a team of ex-Foreign Legion veterans to guard him round the clock. And there is still an Interpol warrant out for Berezovsky's arrest. Putin daily adds charges to the sheet. Весь ладж, все закончится, да? Все, спасибо. Там они могут поехать туда. А все, спасибо тебе большое, спасибо, пока, спасибо. You know, you know, uh, Svetlov, it's Russian poet, and once uh, also he was asked, how are you today, he said. Today, worse than yesterday, but better than tomorrow. 
<laughs> what do they want you for now? Now they uh, said that uh, in 96 I stole uh, 14 hectares of land near the Moscow. And it's so serious that they want to issue international warrant to arrest me in England. And uh, I am sure that Putin does not believe that Blair is not able to take a, a telephone and to call to court and say, come on, immediately extradite Berezovsky. Putin really, really uh, doesn't understand that. What is important is that no one time they prove anything. No one time. <coughs> they never forget me. Berezovsky's movements are severely restricted. He can only fly to Israel. As a Jew, he still holds citizenship there. Anywhere other than Britain or Israel, and he's in trouble. They saw a yacht next door. What was yeah, that? It's my dream. It's dream. It's still dream. I think what to do. I guess you could... Well, you could sail around British territorial waters. Could what? You? you could say, where could you sail it? You're going to sail a boat, where? Uh, no, I, uh, it, it, if, if it to build, it takes several years. Yeah. And I'm sure that time uh, I already will be absolutely flexible to travel all over the world. In this gilded cage, how should Boris fill the days? Why? Plot, of course. Working out a plan to topple Putin and take Boris back to the throne of Russia. A key part of the strategy, his last remaining media asset in Russia. The newspaper Kommersant, the country's financial times. Я не знаю, там он говорит не так, он там говорит, Путину пиздец. Я говорю, Борис, вот ты мне, пожалуйста, ты большой человек, да, ты политик. Я человек маленький, я наблюдатель. Вот, пожалуйста, пиши мне этот пиздец. Вот как он выглядит, там, как фас, как в профиль, да, откуда он придет, слева, справа, да, там. Ну, какие-то его признаки. Он не, не может его писать. Breakfast over, the next fix a daily digest of every significant move in Moscow politics. На самом деле это заболел политика. Вот на сегодняшний момент бывает, там люди подсаживаются на на казино или там на наркотики. Вот он также подсел на политику, я думаю. Вот это им движет. Revenge is strong poison and necessitates strange bedfellows. Boris's key lieutenant is Alex Goldfarb, a famous Soviet dissident. Значит, Юля, я тебе еще раз прошу убедительно, Юля, ты нарушаешь. He fled Russia for America in the 80s and a lifetime of intrigue. Юля, я тебе еще раз скажу, мы не обсуждаем эти вещи по телефону. I got involved with Boris when I realized that he is uh, happen happening to be on the right side. He is the guy who is prepared to put his money where his mouth is. It happened when he was uh, targeted by uh, Putin as uh, to be the number one sacrificial lamb in this drive against the oligarchs. Ну, с точки зрения правительства, они не считают важной фигурой. Ну, потому что они вообще ничего не считают важным. Важно просто сохранить там свои позиции, свои деньги. Ну, ну, я думаю, Березовский найдет все силы опять заявить о своей важности для этого правительства или ну, значимости своей угрозы для этого правительства. Но он неоднократно это доказывал. The first plank of Berezovsky's strategy, 
a concerted attempt to blacken Putin's reputation in the West, while positioning Boris as the newfound friend of democracy and freedom. Today, behind closed doors, he's addressing a private gathering of EU policymakers. Putin cannot be appeased. He can only be resisted. One side will win. One side will lose. History will show. I ask you to give a very warm welcome to Mr. Boris Berezovsky. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Russia, Russia will collapse. Or Putin will collapse. Putin took power and start to move country back, he really does not believe democracy in general because he does not understand. And today parliament is under 100% control of, of the Kremlin and court also under control, under 100% control of the Kremlin. And now Putin is trying to destroy independence of regions. I really think that the time of Putin regime is not long. Okay, thank you very much. Berezovsky's Achilles' heel is his own record in Russia. He might cut a fine figure in the West, but he's a man with a past. In the 90s, thousands gave him money for what they thought would be a share in Russia's first private car factory. But the small print allowed Berezovsky to keep their money, buy his factory, and never once pay a single ruble to a share owner. The episode forms the basis for the state's campaign against him and colors Russian popular opinion about him. Today's sales pitch finds a good reception. The climate of perception about Putin's Russia is changing. Phase two of the campaign. Boris may be confined to Britain's shores, but his billions aren't. They can work overseas. Now to the political crisis in Ukraine. The country's top court has effectively blocked the new president from taking office. It's going to consider allegations of election fraud. For four days now, tens of thousands of people supporting the opposition leader have been protesting on the streets of the capital, Kiev. The Ukrainian election has produced a shock result, and the people want a recount. On the one side, the man who lost the people's choice, Viktor Yushchenko. On the other, the surprise victor, Putin's choice, Viktor Yanukovych. The suspicion is that Russia fixed the outcome. The row is manner for Boris's onslaught on the president, completely in tune with his constant refrain. of the Kremlin. How critical is this moment in not just the Ukraine's future, but Russia's future? Putin doesn't understand. It's not in his power to allow or not allow Ukrainian people to move forward to independence and to freedom. Putin thinks that he has power to control the situation in Ukraine. Uh, and I think uh, it, it means that Putin is criminal. And I think that he understands himself already. That. Thank you very much. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you. In two weeks' time, the Ukrainian Supreme Court will announce whether the election will have to be rerun. Many, many people are not in work because they are out here, and on top of that, of course, what they're looking for is the international pressure, so the international intervention, and that is absolutely crucial, I think, they believe, to their cause. Damien, thank you. In Moscow, 
The suspicion is that Boris isn't lending just his voice to the Ukrainian campaign. The editor of Russia's main opposition paper flies in to try and find out whether the revolution is Berezovsky's creation. There is a school of thought in Ukraine which says that we have to be good and nice to Putin and maybe he will be nice to us, which we believe is wrong. Uh, Ukraine will become the base of Russian opposition. Был бы жив Троцкий, то говорили бы, что это он и Березовский. In secret, Boris is pouring millions into sustaining the spontaneous demonstrations in Kiev. He's also in daily contact with the key opposition leaders. Victory for Yushchenko might aid the spread of democracy, but it would also be a massive coup for the anti-Putin project and bring the Grey Cardinal a thousand miles closer to a return to Moscow. I want to move closer to Russia. I want to move to Kiev. I don't think that my life will be easier than that. I think it will be more difficult. Он будет ближе к России, к российской политике, соответственно, ближе к изданиям Красанта, да? Isn't it good when your uh, travel plans coincide with the general good of the world? The election is on. Barring a massive upset, Yushchenko will win. It's Boris's first clear victory. Berezovsky's strategy is to hurt Russia along its borders, to destabilize its former satellite nations. First Ukraine in the south, now for the north. This is his private jet. Berezovsky is not headed for his holiday home in Israel. Instead, somewhere far colder, where he can test the limits of his confinement and undermine Putin's authority. Russia is just a hundred miles away. The Russian army have instructions to seize Berezovsky if he's within reach. Давайте, потому что он сейчас убежит. Давайте, потому что у него там пресс-конференция начинается и прочее. Да, потом вы не поймаешь. Да. Свет, 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 свет. 
Boris is happy to take the risk, put his head in easy reach of Putin's noose, if by so doing he can make the Russian president look increasingly impotent. But as a precaution, he's doubled his bodyguard. Спасибо большое за внимание. Я хочу сказать, что это, что для меня очень большая честь сегодня быть в Латвии. Если я увижу, что какой-то политический проект реализуем, реалистичен и может привести вот той цели, которая формулирует свержение режима Путина, я безусловно буду вкладывать деньги. Я считаю, что я смогу вернуться в Россию на следующий день после того, как режим Путина падет. Putin takes the bait. The Russians have called the Latvian president. They now know Boris is here. And they're threatening to come and get him if the Latvians don't give him up. Berezovsky leaves for a hastily arranged meeting with unnamed Latvian officials. Behind the scenes, uh, steps by Russia to get uh, him arrested and extradited to Russia. He's a wanted man. News just now from Moscow. By allowing Boris Berezovsky to enter Riga, the Latvian authorities ignored their obligations as an Interpol member and demonstrated their unreliability as a partner in the fight against organized crime, said a Russian foreign ministry statement. Latvia should realize that such actions will not go without consequences. The Russians redouble their threats. They say troops are mobilizing. Hello? How much is the airport? How much is the airport? Five minutes. Five minutes? Okay, all right. The Latvians will only guarantee Berezovsky's safety for another ten minutes. <laughs> so when do they shoot? <laughs> it's Joe. <Fine> Joe. <laughs> As Boris jets out, the Latvian government descends into chaos. There are calls for the resignation of two senior ministers that he met secretly. The governing coalition nearly splits apart. Russia threatens to cut off Latvian energy supplies. But Boris is happy. From the comfort of his jet, he scored another victory against Putin and once more put the name of Berezovsky on the front pages. strategy and tactic is the same now. Yeah. To, to change Putin regime, political, very dangerous for Russia and for the world, the democratic regime. And uh, I think we have done a lot for that. Because Putin's image is damaged. 
damaged a lot. And no one serious politician in the world really recognized Putin as a democratic person. And uh, I participate personally doing that. Yeah. And I'm happy with that. There is the beginning of revolution. There is no end of revolution. Maybe Berezovsky is on the way back. A new holiday destination in Latvia, a new president in the Ukraine. The only irritant, his involvement in the revolution still isn't public. So no visa for him, yet. His wife has to go to Yushchenko's inauguration as his representative. But visa or no visa, Boris still aims to leave a permanent mark on the Ukraine. The Berezovsky Foundation, Kiev branch, is to be founded. Better to be in Europe than in this crumbling empire. Alex is sent to set it up. is still being celebrated. Boris is not going to stop at a mere foundation. He wants influence. He opens up a sister paper to Kommersant with Timoshenko's former political advisor. Boris helped Orange Revolution, not only with money. Uh, he helped with his ideas, with his team, um, with his relationships, with his media, and so on. Now we're in a new country, and we are a new big newspaper, and I think the biggest one. So this revolutionary drive will export to Belarus and Moldova, and uh, and and so and so on. But there are rumblings of discontent about the focus on the Ukraine inside the Berezovsky media empire. Mila. His key lieutenants are summoned to a crisis meeting. Мы живем в интересное время, в интересной стране, да? У нас деньги, вот эти лежат, лежат в твоем банке, да. в твоем, да. но они близко. Не знаешь всех моих проектов, да? Mm -hmm. Где мне нужны деньги, да? Mm -hmm. Поэтому мы решили, что вот а, а, то, что региональная сеть, мы договорились, а что касается остального, я не готов сейчас это обсуждать. 
вы просто путаете понятия. Речь не то, что давай повысим капитализацию ради того, чтобы ее побить. Mm -hmm. да? mm -hmm. Не хочу сейчас. Подожди, будет следующий год, ситуация изменится. Что не, вот, не, у тебя нам просто вот сейчас нужны эти деньги. Да. Вот просто абсолютно, тебе абсолютно, именно абсолютно, нужны. Абсолютно, да? абсолютно конкретно, совершенно верно. У нас есть проекты, на которые нужны эти деньги. Это абсолютно правильно. Мы просто посмотрели другие проекты, и мы считаем значительным событием, целесообразным проектом. Unrepentant, Boris presses on. With a newspaper up and running, his foundation in place, he now wants his Ukrainian visa. To cement his application and further blacken Putin's reputation, he quietly offers the new Ukrainian government a set of secret tapes which he bought five years ago. Recordings of the previous government's most private conversations, they offer a partial proof of an official conspiracy to murder a troublesome journalist. The new state prosecutor flies to London to get them. Uh, Rostislav? Boris makes doubly sure the world knows. He decides to go public. Alexander Ramovich, is it clear that you are helping Milichenko? Why do you do this? I called him Alex Gulfarov and asked him to find out in this case. Alex said that this is in strong accordance with the structure of our fund. And he has to realize that in the two years, Три года об этих материалах вообще никто не вспоминал, да? потому что все твердо понимали, что Кучма никогда не даст, его режим никогда не позволит э, сделать так, чтобы эти материалы служили какой-то базой доказательной. А, ну а мы, тем не менее, считали, что время настанет, не, непременно настанет, э, и не ошиблись в этом. Э, и сегодняшняя власть, с моей точки зрения, на Украине не имеет шанса пройти мимо этих материалов, но, собственно, это подтвердил и президент. Does the Watergate, uh, you know, um, tapes help the United States? Uh, you remember the recordings in the Oval Office? Sure. It's part of the history. It's the recordings in the presidential um, office. Does it help or does it not help? It's for historians to judge. Консульської служби Міністерства закордонних справ України Микола Точицький повідомив сьогодні, що тиждень тому бізнесмен звернувся до Української імміграційної служби за візою. Проти візиту опального російського олігарха в Україну сьогодні висловився міністр внутрішніх справ Юрій Луценко в Березовському видачі візи, бо його перебування в Україні може поставити Міністерство внутрішніх справ у незручне становище. The fear of neighboring Russia and its furious president outweighs the lure of an oligarch with a murky past. The Ukrainians park his visa application permanently. Boris is back in his gilded cage. The problem of my visit to Ukraine, it's not problem of Berezovsky, it's problem of Ukraine. Are they really build democracy? It's not my problem. It's problem of Ukraine. How Ukraine identified herself as a country, as a democratic country, or country which depends on the Russia, which follow not democratic rules, but some special games. Putin would uh, consider uh, any uh, act of uh, benevolence towards Boris by any country is a personal affront. And from that, the um, whole international crisis arises with regard to his visa. We helped them. We, we really helped them. Yeah. And Alex traveled to uh, Kyiv. We delivered uh, the material to the prosecutor's office and yeah. to the investigators. Dictaphone, uh, remote control. They really needed those, these materials. And we happened to have these materials. And if it's reason not to give me this, <laughs> I don't understand really uh, what, what is a, a real way of uh, thoughts of uh, authorities. Thank you. 
And his other Ukrainian initiative isn't going so well either. Today, the new Commerçant staff are putting together a dummy issue for the first time. Тогда что получается? У нас на политику... Во-первых, так, на, на, на первую полосу заветки нет. И это плохо. И это плохо вообще тогда, очень плохо. Да, ничего нет тоже, да? Реально там мы бы, я не знаю, мы бы ничего не вытянули нифига. Вообще ничего нет. А ну вот дела как? Вот вы же видели, коллеги сегодня была очень вялая, кислая. И по сути я вот очень сильно расстроен. Потому что люди заявили слабые темы, абсолютно слабые темы. Я думаю, что сегодня мы ничего не сделаем. Six months on, no visa, the launch of his paper on hold, the anti-Putin project is stalled. Its progenitor still confined to these shores. I don't want to limit my life what Putin wants. Putin is a bandit, real bandit. As a bandit, I don't have any doubt that he will try to damage me in Ukraine. Putin really uh, hates my interest to Ukraine. Boris's PR machine is still pumping out the message of defiance. The trouble with this world is that one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. There is some kind of dirty tricks campaign being waged against him to attack him, to physically intimidate him, or attempt to physically intimidate him, um, and to mount media attacks on him at every level, and where if he approaches authorities in other countries, he discovers that there is a file on record put there by the Russians questioning his integrity, questioning his financial status, questioning his political status. They argue this is more than just a visa application. I've worked for F.W. de Klerk, uh, Ronald Reagan, and of course I worked for Mrs. Thatcher. I think Boris Berezovsky is a very important person because he believes more profoundly in democracy and in human rights than almost anybody I've come across. But as summer arrives, something unexpected happens. Something that completely restores Beresovsky's sagging fortunes. Now, he was once thought to be Russia's richest man, but today Mikhail Khodorkovsky was sentenced to nine years in jail. The billionaire businessman was found guilty of fraud and tax evasion in a trial that was criticised in the West as politically motivated. Mikhail Khodorkovsky charged with a string of economic crimes. After a trial lasting a year, today Mr Khodorkovsky found guilty. Sentenced to nine years in a prison camp. The verdict on the Hodorowsky trial completely changes the dynamic of anti-Putin politics. Even George W. is coming round to Boris's world view. Good day, thank you. Please be seated. You know, I expressed my concerns about the case to President Putin because 
As I explained to him here, you're innocent until proven guilty, and it appeared to us, uh, at least people in my administration, that it looked like he had been adjudged guilty prior to having a fair, tri fair trial. In other words, he was put in prison and then was tried. And so we've expressed our concerns about the system. The sentence is so harsh that it forces other opposition groups to consider an alliance with the one man they've all shunned until now. Many people, I think even majority, in Russia and uh, on the West, thought in a different way. They thought that they, he will be released. Yeah? And, uh, and what happened yesterday, it's really shock. We are now in a position to form alliances and coalitions with various uh, people and groups. We have now right to do everything what we want. So one thing is forming some sort of a broad-based coalition to see whether an orange revolution in Russia is possible. We are not just follow just uh, just legal way, let's say, uh, because we already all of us, all the country, already out of constitutional space. Yeah. I think it's very very important. For okay, okay, thank you. The key to this end game lies in the affections and wealth of the enraged Hodorowsky camp. Leonid Nevslin, Hodorowsky's partner, lives in Israel. Boris is in touch instantly the verdict is delivered, but Nevslin escaped a Moscow murder charge for political asylum, and he's wary of Berezovsky's entreaties. He can make a great mistakes, and Putin is his big mistake, and he should uh, correct his mistakes. I know Berezovsky for a long time. He's very complicated, very tough, yeah, yeah. very energetic, yeah. But he loves Russia. He's inside Russia all his life. He's a Russian politician, yeah, and he wants good for Russia, yeah, and Putin not. He hates Russia, he hates Russian people, yeah. He loves only himself like a president of Russia. And uh, the main thing is that one of them is a very clever man and another is full. There are a lot of scorpions in this bottle against Putin, believe me. A lot of. Eventually, Nevslin agrees to let his staff meet Berezovsky's and discuss possibilities. A meeting is set up in London. Alex Goldfarb is ordered to catch the red eye from New York. We obviously are on the same side, but there have been not much cooperation between us. And I just wanted to sit down with him and see whether we can uh, cooperate and whether we can help each other and so on, because uh, they do have uh, people working for them in uh, the United States, I'm sure. Obviously, some advisors are cautious, they, and maybe there is some sense in it, at least as long as, uh, as uh, Khodorkovsky and Nevzlin had some hope. Maybe it was wise for them to keep a distance from us, but maybe it's about time to join forces. The meeting is set for midnight on neutral territory. Mm -hmm. 
Значит, смотри, там сейчас с Украины, значит, там такая ситуация. Да, последний. Читал, да? читал. Министр там. Читал. They are trying to preserve an empire. They think we're the enemy. They're going, they're going after us. As simple as that. Because some fucked up KGB officer came to power in Russia, that's it. The Korokovsky camp are reluctant to commit, but they do agree to consider a firm alliance. And Boris has sent in his top man to sort out Commerson. Сошел с ума. Так было с Путиным, кстати. И, и первый раз, когда он придумал, что Путин должен быть президентом. И когда он стал, ну, вышел из депутатов там, выехал из парламента и сказал, что нас ждет тоталитаризм. Вот. И то опять думаешь, что он зашел. Потому что мы же в хороших данных отношениях, я ему желаю, в общем, ну, успехов, да? И если я знаю о его каких-то планах там, то я могу быть ангажированным, ну, даже не желая этого, да? Ну, как у нас говорят, меньше знаешь, лучше спишь. The makeover starts right away. Goldfarb is just back from scoping out the next target for Operation Freedom, the United States of America. Berezovsky can only achieve his dream of revenge if he's got the tacit support of the U.S. administration. Что мы хотим, я согласен, но что мы хотим означает формулировку конкретных проектов. Что касается Америки, все поняли, что Буш ходит. И сейчас, сейчас, будет срок. сейчас начинается маневрирование, как что, люди забивают себе позиции. Идет некая вот консолидация всех сил, которые считают, что Буш был в России неправ. Поскольку, поскольку есть сейчас другие геополитические интересы, типа того, что вообще рассматривается идея замены арабской нефти на русскую нефть, и поэтому это... Значит, вот это есть позиция нынешней администрации, но есть и другая позиция. Возможно ли, возможно ли оранжевая революция в России, к чему она приведет? Жо, значит, у меня есть конкретное предложение. Давай сделаем так, давай встретимся с Невзом. О. Есть возможность, что, так, скорее всего, поедет в Штаты. 
Да. А, но не будем сейчас на это закладываться. Давай попробуем с ним встретиться в Израиле. Давай. Да, абсолютно. Да. Я не возражаю. Давай. Boris needs to cement his alliance with the Khodorkovsky camp if he's going to influence the U.S. trip. Единственный способ исправить ситуацию в России – это сменить режим. И мои действия, как я уже говорил, будут более политическими, нежели нежели бы они были, если бы мы договорились. Если бы мы, так сказать, если бы решение было гуманным, то я сразу нападаю, если нападаю. Beresovsky flies out to meet Nevslin in Israel. Nevslin goes to the U.S. and addresses the Senate and proclaims the Beresovsky message: Putin must go. The moment Nevslin set foot in the United States at the invitation of U.S. Senate prompted sensation in the Russian media that Nevslin, who is on international arrest warrant, who is accused of murder, he is now speaking in the U.S. Senate. I am determined to bring Boris to United States in the fall, in September or October. And um, we have uh, uh, secured invitations from very prominent academic uh, centers, such as Harvard University or think, tank, think tanks in Washington. But at the time of the revolution, they are the ones who organize and who are not afraid. It's not difficult, just a matter of money at the moment. Over the summer, Operation Beresovsky moves up another gear. Boris goes on the stump. And what is the most important? Putin destroyed the basic mechanism of democracy in Russia. Kommersant gets a launch date. It's all looking up. Как себя ведет человек, которому очень хочется писать? И вот он как-то бежит до туалета. Вот, вот так приблизит. And Boris even has time to invest in Latin American football. Борис! Мы сделали это! We did it! We did it! Я говорю, we did it! И на первом полосе заметка про то, что Газпром наебал Украину. Мы победим, вот. Мы всех выедем. А мы всех победим. Пока. Сейчас поедем вот в Берштадт. И вы их знаете, проезжайте в Берштат, дорогие английские телезрители. And then it's finally public. Boris paid millions to the Kiev revolutionaries. The Ukrainians are horrified. He's unrepentant. surprise of uh, that people uh, who are around Yushchenko, uh, very close to him, uh, lies so much. Uh, but, uh, but I want uh, to use this statement that uh, they're really lying, saying that they didn't know me, they didn't visit me, they didn't do anything with me and so They initiated our meetings uh, before revolution, they need help and they asked me to, to, to help. And they came to, to London. And they ask help, not only money. They ask also advice. Um, you've confirmed that the that the documents showing the payments you say are genuine, although you won't comment on who received the payments. Um, and you're confirming that they asked you for help, and that you agreed. You said to help them, although you won't say exactly what that help consisted of. 
don't you think that that, that uh, damages some of the people involved in this in some way? I uh, don't understand well your question. Do you propose me to lie? No, uh, not at no, all. Good. I'm, I didn't initiate anything. I didn't initiate our connections. I didn't do something wrong. And I don't understand why I should uh, hide that uh, when I tell you, when I told you. Thank you. Always very exciting. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> It's a mark of the change in Boris's fortunes that six months on, there's no threat of extradition, no need to flee at five minutes' notice. Boris claims it's a simple business trip. He's selling educational software. And he's brought along his new business partner. I'm just excited to be here. It's my first visit. Yes. And um, I'm enjoy and looking forward to uh, learning about uh, Latvia and, and sharing a lot of, about what I do. Mm -hmm. See if we can do it here as well. And who are your partners in Latvia? Boris Berzowski is back there. You recognize him. Yeah. He's a great guy. He, has, he knows a lot about this region and is very helpful in a strategic sense for us. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really happy to have him as a partner in our company. Okay. Neil has very professional software. For education, and it's really, I think, could be useful for uh, for young uh, children here in space. Well, Neil Bush, Neil Bush is uh, brother of the president, and locally, uh, he is recognized as such. And the presence of a prominent and respected American here wouldn't harm. It's all coming together, and it's nice to know that you are uh, on the right side. Clearly, when the history is written, we will be totally vindicated. Is this good for security to have a big group like this? <laughs> I'll feel better when I die in a group. Right? <laughs> in one year, Boris Berezovsky has gone from hiding out in his gilded cage to a nighttime tryst in a public park with the US president's brother. His nemesis, Vladimir Putin, is severely weakened. But Putin's still in power, and Boris isn't yet back on the throne. It's half time, and there's everything to play for. Putin will not be removed by constitutional way. Russian politics is Russian roulette. Are you prepared to take risk or not? Monument of freedom. Yes. That's very nice. Very nice. Like flat. Just, it's very uh, peaceful. I don't think it. Think We're attracting a lot of attention here, yes. though, with the camera. Yeah, well, 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 they go, well, okay. they go home eventually. And... <laughs> okay. 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 And the series continues at the same time, nine o'clock next Thursday here on BBC Two. Next tonight, Joanna Lumley and Dennis Lawson star in the bittersweet comedy Sensitive Skin. <laughs>